So we have several problems to start off with. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> it's always a good way to start. I have an elephant sitting in my seat. Oh, buddy. Hi. And, um, yeah, He's you. pretty cute. You're in my seat. I know. Yeah, oh, so you're going to... Oh, that was nice. Yeah. yeah, he likes to be a part of the, the video-making process. No, he's just a... He's just a lazy bud. Badass. Yeah. <laughs> I think also because it's cool. Like, this is like a nice, cool area. Oh, here, there's another one. Oh, jeez. You know, guys. Missing out. Problem number two. Needy kitties. My hair. This is my attempt at not looking like I care, but in reality, <laughs> it takes a lot of effort. But it ended up hey, looking, it was supposed to look like garbage. I'm just putting my finger. Oh, I was. I thought you were pointing finger. here, and I was like, wait, what? It's Am supposed I to be made up to be like it looks askew. Gotcha. But it takes a lot of work to make it look like it looks askew, but it just turned out looking legitimately like askew and like shit. Eh, so, no, I mean, listen. Whatever. Legitimate askew would be like what, so all over whatever. the place. I'm, I'm whatever. But, but it's fine. It, I'm sure it'll. I'm sure Why it'll does be it just look like fine. It's got garbage in it. Who knows? It's probably oil of oregano or something. I was gonna say. Every time we put oil of oregano in something, like but every single cloudy. bottle tastes like oil of oregano. Did you put something in here? It no, looks... I swear I didn't. I'm not touching that. We'll just. Yeah, you're right. It does look like it's probably just backwash. It probably backwashed it for my salad. Gross. <gasps> That's what it is. How you backwash? What do you throw up into the bottle? What? You backwash that much? I guess. What are you? I guess. This are you a runway model or listen, something? Don't, don't look at my backwash. Don't look at me. <laughs> I'm just going to put it in shame over here. No. Okay. I don't like, Anywho, I, don't I like hope everybody year. had... You're fine. A good mo Mother's Day um, for all the moms out there. And the way the is my nose. Obviously, Mother's Day is kind of like a mixed baggage of stuff. So, <laughs> right? It's... All sorts of emotions that it can bring up. Happiness if you have a mom or you are a mom, and stupid nose. Grief if you know you've had a miscarriage or lost your mom, as in stupid your case. Allergies. So, so next time we go out, I'm bringing my gun to protect us against allergies. That was funny. Uh, I should be laughing, pouring out of your mouth right now. I'm trying to figure that one out. <laughs> Protection, you know, associating gun with self-protection. With allergies? Time. Yeah, well, I mean. <laughs> so, anywho. My comedic genius is lost on you. Um, so, yeah, just trying to make that, like, point out there because I think these holidays can be hard. They're great and they're, they're joyful, but people do go through emotions with them and it's just important yeah they're great if you've got that. everybody well but that's what i was saying if your mom croaked three yes. months ago you're gonna yes. be or if you're, you're still gonna, dealing you're with gonna be it. like f mother's day or right if you're if you've just lost ask a me, baby ask me or, how i know yeah um get, what is she sorry guys we do it's just our cats are crazy it's like the animal kingdom over here. <laughs> what is she doing I she's think, got her paw on i think she saw a hummingbird up on the hummingbird feeder. So she was trying to get closer up. And now she's just being a turd because she's bored and I think I forgot to give them their treats today. Oh, uh, they, they're they kind of really... Psycho. I found these green into, treats yes. for cats. And they do a great job at cleaning their teeth. Great job. But they must have kitty crack cocaine in them because holy moly do they... like. You don't give them to them one day, and they are on your shit. Especially the little one. Like, she is... Oh, she'll remind you. She you is really into And then I got some conglucamine chondroitin. I think that's what it's oh, called. Oh, yes. For, for, for He's yes. 20 years old, and um, I am telling you, the second day after I started giving him, he was jumping around like he was Carl Lewis. Whereas before, he was just like, oh, I don't feel like blinking. So... That, yeah, that stuff and is, now he's just like what? That stuff is flying off the bed, yeah. jumping around. He's on his back. He's got little paws up. He's that um, stuff is legit, yo. Yeah, it's actually been life changing for him. He seems so much happier. I'm about to start taking it. I know. Well, I made a joke to a friend. I was like, "Hey, maybe I should start eating the cat treats because 
Kind it, of, it made him like 10 years younger, so why not, you know? Kind of invokes the conspiracy theorist to me when it's like, well, they obviously can do shit like that for, like, why can't they, you know, do it for us? And I know there's a bunch of people out there being like, it's made different, huh? Yeah, whatever. It was a joke. Kind of. Kind of. Maybe. Maybe we're secretly stashing i want um i just want my robotic body that i'm sure that they're developing in some clandestine facility just take my brain out of this heap and put it in the robotic arm body it'd be great that's what'll happen when we get like our resurrected body oh we're gonna get a choice well okay not a choice but like we can have a robotic body well it's not like a robotic but it'll be an enhanced body it'll be like a new body robotic body enhanced yes (laughs) You can like, you can, I guess if you want, you can go back to like a busted down body just because if you want to challenge. <laughs> yes. I don't. No, I'm just thinking of like, you get a new body. So maybe, Did you I know, it'll be yeah. all sorts of ways. You know what I mean? But it'll, maybe you'll, <laughs> Oh, we're going yeah, since we've had 20,000 problems yeah, with so recording. We so made it six minutes in. We managed to awesome. talk about nothing. I was just going to say, do you want, maybe we'll pray and... Oh. Uh, kind of get into or kind of going to intertwine Pray like some life day. topics into some of the things that i f- i feel like this, the spirit's been trying to teach us and just bring things to, to life for us and i just thought you know what it'd be maybe helpful for you know for some other people that are kind of going through that too so should we pray first oh wait a minute just real quick what chapters are this so this is we're going to do 36 and 37 today. So 36 and, and 37, and this looks stupid. I'm doing this so I don't have to, like, search to, like, three quarters of the video to try to find out what chapters as we start reading them, because I forgot. Oh, we did. Th- okay, so. So I'm going to look, yes. see my hands up like this, represent the spot where I can stop while I'm searching, and go, 36 and 37. Well, we, d- we went through the videos last week, and our we pro- fixed everything, our right? Production, our production value is top-notch. <laughs> top-notch. <laughs> they were terrible. We probably win, a, probably win an Oscar for this, and then when we go on stage, I can slap somebody. It'd be great. But the good news is that it's, um, it's all fixed. Like, right? All the videos, are, they're in order. Like, the right chapters it's now, for the most part, are fixed. there. It's, um... We're still missing one because... Oh, yes. I said, like, two sentences concerning uh, a topic that you can't talk about, which should be obvious is terrible, but I, that's all I'll say. Is that for a part one? Two. Oh, part, part two. Part one is up. Okay. <laughs> that's what he said. Um, and part two needs to be... I need to edit out the horrifically offending, offensive uh, verbiage and re-upload it. I just haven't yet because... Well... I could sit here and make up a bunch of legitimate sounding lies, or I could just say I've been lazy. I'll let you pick which one you want to. It's been sort of busy too, though. We've it's been a lot going on, so combo. Oh, tell me about it. Combo, yeah, it's, we've definitely been having a pretty busy, pretty busy, busy. busy legitimate month, reasons, so. legitimate reasons. And there'll be like videos. I th- I'm kind of saving a lot of this for a bigger like video and story so i'm gonna give little hints in here but if it's a little weird it's because i'm trying to work on a baby <laughs> and i'm gonna give birth to what? it you're what <laughs> you're pregnant again <laughs> yes i'm pregnant oh i'm giving birth to my my personal story holy moly oh, my so- personal testimony of my life and and how God has been there for me through it and i was about to take a cyanide pill the freaking craziness and um, Another baby. Yeah. I was about I'm to take excited. a cyanide pill. I was end it all. Another baby. No. It's just kind of like something that I'm taking time on to like grow and make sure that it's done, you know, correctly. So, um, so yeah, that's probably it'll it'll be it'll happen. I'm not sure exactly when because, like I said, I'm taking a long time and it's a whole like story from like childhood up to now and going through. Um, Things from like your youth, but then also when you're hit with hard health issues and you have to go through that, especially at a young age, because they're not expected at that age and just how um, it affected me and what Jesus did for me and who he is to me. So we, we will get there. 
But anywho, um, C. C. So there's my baby. I thought for a split second there you're talking about something completely different, and I was about to hang myself. <laughs> <laughs> Holy smoke. Holy smoke. But even still, we've been busy, you know, with like great things and seeing friends and meeting babies. And, I mean, yeah. events and babies. soccer and all. Oh, it was cute. And all sorts of fun things, too. So. It was cute because it wasn't ours. Yes. That's why it was yes. cute. It's always like that with kids, though. I love kids and I do like having them. But it's like the grandparent yeah, age afford, is great because you get to have the kids. We can afford six nannies like Beyonce. <laughs> like what, no, she got that's six why nannies? grandparents are great, you know, because you get to keep them for a little while, but then you kind of go, here you go, here you go. You mean spoil them for a while. Yes, yes, exactly. Them. So um, so that's part of the reason. I think that, so you just have to do part two, and we have one video that we didn't, we reshot, I think it was like, chapter 14 or something like that we never got it up remember thought, it was from that one night ago or maybe we did i thought we did we just didn't realize it was hiding in one of the other maybe videos. so we have to look for that and the other part too other than that we're pretty much all uploaded so we're getting there we're making time to get it organized so do you want to pray or do you want me to pray whatever i, I don't care it's up to you guys i can do it I'm just going to loosen my belt a little here because, oh. Does it feel good? Lunch, yeah. Yeah. Well, it's the post-lunch set it. yeah. Because I'm fat. I'm fat. All righty. Lord, we are so thankful to be able to be here and just to share our stories and share what you and, and the Spirit are teaching us in, in our life so that we may be able to help and try to help others understand who you are and what your heart is and just the points that you want to get across we do these videos for you and and to bring you glory and and to bring your heart out into the world and to help others understand that uh, as well you know and we just pray that you bless our viewers and that you bless us and that you help us all just soften our hearts and, and our minds so that we can understand the points that you want to teach each of us in our lives because it's so different and individual for each of us and you are so great at crafting that to each unique person. So we pray in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right. So I feel like Chicken tonight, chicken tonight. <laughs> uh, we've been like, we've been watching, because we watch a lot of our church videos, right? Um, at night, you know, uh, on the our phone. Our church has an app and they have sermons yes. and classes online, so. So we've, we, we, we usually like, part of our nightly ritual is to try to watch. Like either some or all or what, uh, you our, know. We, we sacrifice an ox and then a goat. Yes. And then some grain offerings, and we watch uh, <laughs> videos from church. Yes, and then we've been kind of, between the series that we're watching in Acts and some of the things that we watched from our sermon, they did a sermon on an Isaiah prophecy, uh, I feel like the Spirit has been kind of Ugh. teaching us Sorry. about what it really means to have like a belief in Jesus. Like what is it really all about? Like why 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 we why do we do it, right? Well, I mean for me, I think part of it was feeling like, you know, I my heart is not like the best. It, it is very kind of sinful. I'm kind of stubborn and I do all these things and I just felt like Well, you're a goody two shoes. Me? <laughs> right. <laughs> You know when you know that you just, you're trying to get through life and you're doing all these things on your own and you think you know what, what you're doing and they sort of don't really go the way that you think they're, they're going to go. And I just feel like when I finally started to lose that like self-preservation 
control and realize that I need help maybe from somebody besides like myself or even my family. Because sometimes we run to people like, you know, your family, your friends, um, and, and they meet some of those needs, but they're not going to meet all of them. They can't do it. It's not, they're not perfect in right. meeting your needs and either are your coworkers or um, your counselor or anything. And I'm like, well, who could do that so perfectly? And when obvious answer is obvious when i finally started to understand who jesus was and understand what this all meant it started to click for me you know it really was about just it wasn't some big huge thing it was just a simple you know i really need some help i've been trying to do these things all on my own and they're not going in the way that i want and I'm personally, as a person, not going the way that I want. And I've tried all these avenues and, okay, they're not working. So Jesus... Sorry, I forgot one of my meds. <sighs> I fully recognize that maybe my ways aren't right. And I, you know, I believe that, like, I need some forgiveness of sins. My heart is very heavy about these things and all of you know your past mistakes and things and it was just in that moment of just it's so simple for me you know and it's different for everybody so this is just me it was just like accepting that i needed forgiveness for sins i needed somebody who was perfect to do that that i could trust myself with to like care for me and voila there it was you know like the spirit is freely given. It's not something that we have to earn. It's not, right? It's not something that we have to work Which I did not know. I we thought, just go, okay, I thought your Jesus. deeds determined. Right. I thought right. I was like, all right, I helped uh, 3.5 homeless children, and I donated uh, $57 to homeless people, and um, I didn't cut anybody off in traffic, and uh, so right. I, I'm sure that I've fulfilled my obligation. Right, like the Lord's to, like, okay. Uh, get through the turn, the turnstile into heaven. You know? <laughs> right, right, right. Uh, show me your resume. I, I was, I wasn't a douche bit. Well, I was a douchebag, but I didn't pass the complete douche threshold. No, right, and you're thinking like. So imagine my surprise when I found out I was wrong. All I had to do was believe, and I didn't have to do all that other garbage. Oh, what a waste. And, ex and just accept Jesus into your life. I could have been a total turd. Let him come in, right? To all those homeless <laughs> yeah. people. No. Just... He ain't going to teach you that, but it's that point yes. of the deeds. <laughs> well, because of like if you make needing a checklist of deeds it, if it that you have sense, to do. If it makes sense, first off, if you don't believe, or don't, why would you accept him as your savior? Why would you kind of even want to go up there unless it's just for the all wrong reasons? Like you've been, you think if there's 72 versions up there or whatever, you know, stupid. Wait, you know. what are you? Well, if you think about it, it okay. makes sense. Like, um, it's heaven. And if you know anything about God, it's not about buying your way in or money. No. Like you're, so you're, that's what you're trying to do is buy your way in with good deeds, which, uh, which, you know, a fake person could do. Just try, you know, just. To try. Right. Or, and why would you even want to be up there if you didn't believe kind of thing? Well, I think there's a difference. I, mean, I, I between, get you would buy because everybody well, says people, it's heaven. But people but. believe, but they believe in a sense of thinking like they they have to do more. That's what it is. Well, oh, I some believe. Some people do that. I believe, but yes. I've got to go and yeah, do yeah, yeah, yeah. Some people, blah blah blah, and I got to go do my twenty. I'm just talking Marys. about the sneaky people. I'm oh, sorry, I should have specified. Thank you. Or yes. the people that don't believe but are trying to cover their bases. Yes, yes. Like Buddha told me to do this, and and for this I got to do Jesus Christ. I got to do this, and for you know. What are the, some of the other ones? Like Islam, I gotta... Right. You know, whatever. Um, people no, just try to I, like... Yes. The, you know, the, but the point of this is more of like deeds-based versus freely given. Acceptance. And freely given. Yes, yes. And acceptance, believe, believe. freely given, belief. Not like belief, deed, shame, guilt. They don't go to, that's, it's, it's like you said, belief, acceptance, freely given, get away from shame and guilt. That is the line that I feel like the path that the spirit has really, really taught me 
um, in the last year. And I just think that it's important. I know there's, you know, there's symbolisms that we can do to show our outward expression and commitment to God. And that is so like, obviously it's important, you know, like baptism, circumcision, things like that. It's not like, you know, they're, they're, it's, it's important, but it's important to always go back to the heart of what I feel like God wants like his children to know and that it's freely, you know, the love is freely given to oh, you Lord, through belief God, and acceptance. Have... You don't need to come in with like shame and guilt either. So, um, oh, through like our, not worthy. yes, like you're not worthy and you, you know, there's gonna, I have like some examples that I actually went through. So, it might help make more sense, but I feel like a lot of people do feel they're not, they're not worthy enough. They didn't do enough. They've, we've had these thoughts. Oh, I've done these actions. These are hideous. Like, is, am I really going to be forgiven? Do I really not need like shame and guilt? Like, do I really not need to do anything to have the spirit of God dwell inside of me? I mean, I think when you go back to the whole point was God wanted to dwell with his children in in the garden and he got rerouted but he always finds a way like he's God you know like he's the he, he'll always find a way so I feel like he found this way in the, in the meantime through because he knew unfortunately like he knew he made us not to be perfect and that's he's okay with that like he knows that we're not going to be perfect and that's why he sent his son who was and that was the whole point of him taking all the I guess you could say like wrath anger that he had and he poured it out on to Jesus so that we could now you know because now we could finally feel like you know there's a story where there's the coal and it's an Isaiah and there's a coal. And when Isaiah goes up to see God for the first time, you can't step in because there's like the separation of, you know, God is holy. Now, you know, since we've disobeyed, we've got some sin. How is he going to, how is God going to fix this? So the coal represented Jesus and Jesus fixed it. So once the coal was touched, which will symbolize Jesus coming and, and dying for us, there was a fixing. It was fixed, like, oh, great, now we are righteous now because of Jesus, not because of us. And that's what people always, I think, should realize. The only reason we're, we're righteous and we have that relationship is Jesus. We don't have to do, like, anything to, to earn that. I think that is important to know, like, and it's a, it is important to know, like, why Jesus really died. He atoned for that sin that God was upset about. So now everything is actually right to those who accept and believe. And now we can actually have God dwell with us every single day on earth and eventually yeah. in person. And I feel like for me, it's been a life-changing thing to, to actually like really fully go. When Jesus said he wasn't going to leave us alone, he really didn't leave us alone. He really left us with him and that spirit inside of us and it's it just it dwells a little differently it's it's in there with you but it, it's it's free so anywho we were watching some acts stories weren't we from our sermons yes. and i wanted to give some examples about like kind of how it the spirit is freely given because i you know it's nice to always back something up right because we want to be credible um, to the spirit and, you know, and, and to, and to you guys. So in Acts, there's a lot of stories about Peter, like walking into different houses after Jesus's, um, resurrection when the spirit started to be like poured out. And I know this is like way down the Bible line, but it's real. I think it's really important. So he would just walk into a house and just, he just would start seeing people like filled with, the spirit of God. They didn't do anything. They weren't like, okay, you need to go get baptized right now. 
Okay, now you have the spirit of God in you. Okay, go get the circumcision done. Come back to me. Now we're going to fill you with the spirit. Literally, they were just like, we believe in um, our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Bam. And he was just like seeing it all over the place so that's when he would go back to the new formed church and start saying like hey guys like look at all this insane things right that um that god is is doing without like actually having to do anything you know what i mean so it shows that um god is always moving and doing things in in the heart of people he doesn't need, uh, I mean, the law is important. He wants us to follow his commands and live a certain way. Obviously, that's important. But when you just go back to like the basic basics of like just being filled with, with the spirit of God, it's God will just freely move like he did back in, you know, back in the days of Noah. Yeah. Okay. So if we want to think about, because we haven't even gotten to the law here. Um, that's coming in Exodus. So Genesis is clearly without a law, right? There's Adam and Eve. There's, right, there's Noah. Let's see who else can we think of. Abraham. No, I think there's a covenant. There's a covenant, but there's, there's not like this huge no, Ten Commandment yeah. law that, you know, was referred to a lot. No, I don't think No, there's that. covenants for sure. Definitely covenants, but like Isaac, Jacob, I don't think he set up this like, okay, guys, here you go. Before I'm coming to you, you're going to blah, 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 and blah, 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 blah. Yeah. He literally just showed up and was like, hey, Abraham, you're freaking 40 years old. Get out of there. 80. Or wait, how old was he? Get out of your, yes. get out of your mom's, Tell, yeah. get out of your mom's <laughs> basement, Abraham. You're 80 years old and go into the world. And Abraham's like, yes. oh. He had his uh, Dorito stained fingers and his Mountain Dew, and he was on his gaming PC playing World of Warcraft. And God was like, slob, lazy slob, you're 80 years old. And he, you know, rolled up a newspaper and chased Abraham out of the basement. Yeah, exactly. And, like, get... And Abraham had to go get a job at 7-Eleven and then go take classes. And then, you know, the rest is obviously... Joseph history. was like, what? He was freaking old by the time he came Pharaoh's chief. I don't think he was 80, though. Was no, he it? wasn't 80, but he definitely wasn't like 20 wasn't or anything. Spring chicken, no. He wasn't no spring chicken, and then suddenly. Could you imagine that speech to his kids? He was like his kid when he was started like using him. He was probably like, Joseph <laughs> Jr., by the time I was your age, I'd been sold off into slavery, and then I was in jail, and then I became the king's personal overlord of all Egypt. It's like what a drastic like resume. Yes, can so you like, imagine like uh, you know when you go through that resume of a story like uh, just the uh, craziness yeah. of it. I think it's the point of of showing like in Genesis that God was moving and doing things mm, with His people before sorry. He put the oh, commands and laws and different things in place. Yeah. Now He did because they are important it's not like a free-for-all like we want to live a certain life right. but i just wanted to like kind of like plant a seed for people to meditate on for themselves you know because they've got everybody has to kind of like meditate and think about it and ponder it with like themselves and the spirit and things like that but um i truly think you know from what i've been kind of going through I can really see from my life how God and Jesus truly care about like my heart and my humanness and they validate it. Sometimes people I think feel nervous that like their humanness is not like, oh my I can't go to like like God, a spiritual being, like being with like my humanness, you know what I mean? Like, I, don't, I, I, can't to, I don't know if you do, but I felt this I way. can't comment because like, I don't understand that at all. Like you're a human with human emotions. Sometimes people think they have to be a perfect being in front of God. Like, I'm just going to well, sit I'm here. I'm pretty and, sure he knows we're morons. No, and but I, it's hard sometimes to feel like yeah. you can actually let go. And I think that is what, I have been learning in this last couple, like, month journey that I want to share more about. That's what I've been saying. Remember we watched the one pastor who's uh, like, I, you know, I don't like these shirts that say God is my homeboy. Or, and I get, like, 
that Oh, that's a little too fucking... But, you want to be respectful. Was like, but he was like... Very respectful. I don't know, but I'm like, no, dude. It, no, you. it's not like all serious business and stuff no he, no there's he, a bunch of he, I, right i think he missed noah's boat uh, no i think one. he i think he wanted to just convey like to be respectful <sighs> right like we don't want to be too loose no i think he was a little bit extra I, I don't know he, i think that's what you know people have their things yeah and everybody does and uh, that's yeah. fine no and here's the thing like i said I mean, nobody's he, perfect he wore flip-flops out in public so let's no. <laughs> you wear sorry you wear flip-flops he's like insane then. with flip-flops so i'm just like whatever but everybody's got their things but i think the point is that everybody um has their imperfections that like we aren't created to be perfect and we're not created to be perfect in front of god's eyes he obviously knew we weren't going to be which is why he sent Jesus. So that kind of makes sense. And that being a human is a part of like, we were created to be humans with like emotions and feelings. And we don't know everything that's going on. And I, from what I've been finding is, is that that welcoming of like emotions in front of the Lord has been very life changing. There's been things going on like in our life that with with our life and then even with our relationship with God, right? There's two, there's two kind of distinctions. There's like things that you don't know what's going on with your life, things that like you're grieving and going through, then you don't understand always what God is actually doing with your life. And sometimes you hold it up so much inside and just pretend to pray and like, uh, uh, like for me it is, I'm not saying for other, like for me kind of like a generic, like robotic mm -hmm. kind of way um and instead of just like in a moment going like yeah i'm like really freaking like frustrated like what i'm scared i'm a human i don't know what's going on and just kind of like actually working through that frustration in a prayer you know what i mean i think that it's the the emotion of like i'm sad i'm i'm frustrated um i'm happy because you want gratitude um i'm angry god what are you doing like, I don't know. Like, I, I don't know any of this. I want to understand you and, and your plan for, for my life. And also, why am I having all these emotions? Can you help me work through them? You know, is it something that is um, about, like, my life circumstance right now that I'm not processing? Am I processing some of my emotions about uh, my life circumstances onto you because I'm just not fully understanding your plan. And do I actually have a trust issue with you? Am I trusting or am I still controlling and don't have that basic, like, do I, do I have that self-preservation control because I haven't really truly worked on like a trust issue with you? Or am I just displacing my emotion from my life onto you? Or am I mad at my husband and now it's coming across at you and just Sorry, I actually I need oh, more Advil. Holy moly. oh wait are you okay do we need to pause it just hurts <sighs> my back i was explaining in other videos uh we, we both have bad backs quite, yeah quite severe in fact it's okay um and sometimes and i'm sure it's due to inflammation uh when i sit we call it we jokingly call it my off switch like I could sit and yeah. it, it's just like, it's just the weirdest feeling. Like literally my, I'll just be like, and it's not narcolepsy. It's not that. It's just literally like, I'll just get so tired in like an instant. Just about, and it's kind of, I'm trying to like. No, you can stand if you need to for a second. Well, I might, sh yeah, I might shift that. around a lot, but it, yeah. Cause the two things are like, it's, it's okay. It's, I think it's inflammation based, but yeah, it freaking hurts right now. Well, here's the thing. If you need to stop it for a second, we'll stop for a second and just let you, like, there's no... Yeah. Plus, yeah. I'm a little bit... I'm a mess right now. Holy smokes. Dear Lord. Here we go. I'm a mess right now. Can you please straighten me out for the remainder of this video? In Jesus' name we pray. Via the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. All right. I'm sorry. Oh, no. You should... Listen, I'm this is human -ness. I'm a big distraction. This is, like, real life, so we don't Holy need moly. to yeah, shy I'm, so away if from I just, that. If I'm just, like look like i'm just trying to you know yeah it's cool pay no attention to me i mean i know it's impossible 
We're, well, we're just talking about humanness, and I just that's actually a really good example of like sometimes in these hard moments of going, oh, okay, Lord, like, uh, can you, like, you know, help me? Like, I need your strength, I need your like encouragement or whatever. You can, can you help me get out of this? So, some, some Adderall. right, or do I need to take an ibuprofen or whatever it is that you know the Lord knows you need in that moment, and letting Him actually guide you to it. Sometimes, like, we go, well, I'm just going to go grab this or I'm going to go grab this. And I've just been learning on, like, trying to just pray it up first and see, like, is he going to give me a strength? Is he going to guide me to this? Is he going to guide me to that? Is he going to help me process this emotion? And a lot, like, lately it's processing emotions, like, on the spot. Like, I feel the emotion, whatever it is, and then we start to, and it's, you know, it's a safe thing. Because it's not like it's unsafe. We're not sitting there for two hours feeling the emotion. It's, you know, I mean, they're fairly quick, you know, emotions that, that you let it pass through you. And then we just kind of talk about where it's coming from. If, is it like a current trigger? Is it a past trigger? Is this a current frustration I've got maybe with like my daughter in her school or like we won't go in there it's not i'm not but i you know just yeah yeah, things like that and and then after we get through it truth because jesus is truth and he'll truthfully tell me the truth in in a nice way you know like it's it's not like he, he doesn't he'll feed me the good things like he feeds me the positive like you know and all of it and if there is some like rebuking or anything it's he's so gentle it's nothing that makes me feel like bad about myself it's no like shame or guilt if anything i feel free and it's like whoa the shame and guilt is gone and i'm not really like it's not that bad after all right you know what i mean (laughs) it's it's either a lie that i've told myself that i need to work out or always make it worse or right or like oh okay maybe i'll just do that like differently whatever it is there's so many different ways but i think the whole like point of it is just realizing that we can have our human emotions in in front of god and he actually like really in jesus they they want to do that they want to heal our hearts they want to listen to us they want to validate us and make us feel human but then they want to help us to change things around in in a positive way and they want to tell us like as much as they can about what's going on so we can understand them i don't ever get the feeling that it's like oh i just want to leave you like completely in the dark like sometimes you're only going to get like little bits and pieces of a current moment of what a plan is but it's enough to at least get you to sort to start and then as it goes you down the line, as you. right, right, exactly. And like I said, there was a lot of like emotions and things that I'm working through that I want to save for the mental health story. So that's why I didn't really go into too many like actual examples, but um, yeah, so that's sort of, and oh, I always want to remember like, there is one story I wanted to share. Because this is kind of about like accepting and receiving mercy and grace and getting the shame and guilt away. Yes. So uh, I think it was like not this weekend, but the last weekend we were on a trip to Sedona and I was having a lot of asthma issues at the time, allergies and different things. And we were going up and oh man, my lungs were just, they were hurting and I would pray and I felt like I wasn't getting like a response and I was been working through these emotions with God because we were just kind of in that spot and it, it's okay and by the third time we actually started processing the frustration and it's like you know I felt well here we go again like we just want to have like a nice trip right a family yeah. nice trip to Sedona I don't want my family to be burdened and my daughter to see me burdened by like my lungs and having to feel uncomfortable do all these things and then it just kind of turned out to be a disaster right and I really felt like I wanted to make sure that everybody had a good trip and I was really trying to 
do it for them. I mean, obviously for me, but you know, like when you have a family, you do things for you guys too, because you guys needed the trip too. So then I, you know, after doing that and kind of working through that frustration with God, right after that is when I, you know, I received mercy and, and a blessing of a great day. Like, you know, the Lord helped me do what I needed to do for my lungs, like my mask and because I have major allergies and we were going on a hike. So just wearing like the, the, the mask and, and the glasses helped and just using the spirit to, cause he, he, you know, he just through the spirit sometimes just gives you strength and provides this amazing day. And it turned out to be awesome. And I actually felt like I had, you know, that frustration with God. And I was like, I'm not really worthy. Like I kind of was we're mad at him a little bit. We're and, and I don't, I'm like, really, are you, you're blessing me for being mad? <laughs> like you, and that's when I finally, he taught me his, the love of his mercy and grace in some of our like dark moments that you think, oh, like I, now I need to be shameful and guiltful because I was mad at God. I'm going to go run away like Adam and Eve. And it was like the opposite. It was like, I'm here. I'm got, mad. And wow, the, you're freaking blessing me. You they know? got the boot. They didn't run away. Well, they know they did at first. They ran from God. And Whoa, then they right. got the boot. Yes. So, um, and it was like this eye opening feeling of like, wow, I don't have to feel shame and guilt for my quick feelings um, to God. He actually helped me. And we worked through it. And he gave me mercy and he's teaching me not to be so shameful and so guiltful for some of these like feelings and thoughts towards him towards life i mean you can't abuse things you never want to abuse god's mercy or grace that's like a whole different thing but he knows the heart so he can judge that and and he can and and even if you do he's gonna redirect you that's that's just what he does he just you know, if when you're way off track, maybe you are going a little bit, whatever. There's always like reroutes, the spirits there. It's gonna like, so that is just, it was such a helpful thing for me. And if anybody else feels that sometimes, hopefully that will help you guys. It's just sort of like my personal story and what I feel like the spirit's teaching us. So there you go. I feel like he's blessed us with Kit Kats. Yes. Well, that and this so we can get started right. sorry i really wanted to spend time on it it's such an important like topic i think so Never. but we're gonna do so we're doing genesis 36 and 37 right that's what we said at the beginning oh wait i gotta switch got the wrong one i'm I used to it and i'm like i'm like why does this look different I, i'm just I've been using this in my studies. And then I looked over and I was like, oh. <laughs> I think I'm getting used you're to using that one. You're using the men's devotional. <laughs> I just need to get a woman's one. That's hilarious. Mm. Well, because the King King James Version to go over, like I've been going through Isaiah. Thou so. saith ye shall. Yes. Every every like time I go through Isaiah, I use that one because it's just easier to So understand. we're talking about, oh no. So where are we at? Oh no. 36 and 36. No. Well, 36 is one of those. And he begot his brother, and then his brother's son, or, you know, the genealogy type. Hey, we got to do it. We got to do it. Do you want to do that? <laughs> Probably better at it than me. And then I'll do 37, because okay. I'm terrible with the names and stuff. You're, you're good at that, so. I disagree, but I'll do it anyway. You are. Give yourself some credit. All right. You're the best beepster. So, Genesis 36. I got because of my brack and everything. Did we prayed, right? Yeah, I prayed. I You're thought good. we did. I was You're like, good. Oh, it's okay, babe. Listen, we all have our days, right? Because we usually pray before we read. Yeah, I did it first because it I first. was trying to talk about this, yeah. and I really wanted the Spirit to kind of help So that's why me. I think I got thrown off. Yes, yes. All right. 36, Esau's descendants. All right. Here we are again, man. All right. Let me just see if I can. This is the account of Esau, 
That is Edam. Wait, I missed it. It was his name Edam at first? Yeah, I guess so. How did we miss that? <laughs> you can miss a lot because there's just so much packed in these things. I don't remember that at all. Okay. I'm it whatever. says it right here. I know, but... It's funny, though, how you can miss things. It's a lot of information at once. Are we even pronouncing his name right? Probably Isu? not. <laughs> Isao, is it whatever. Isu, his name is Isu now, because it says me. Isu took his wives from the women of Canaan, Ada, daughter of Elan, the Hitt, Hitt, Hittite, and oh, oh, Holy Obama, daughter of Ana, and granddaughter of Zibian, the Hivite. Also, Basemath, Basemath, okay, daughter of Ishmael and sister of Nebaioth. Oh, Ada bore Eliphaz to Isu, Basemath before Reuel, and Oholiobama before Jeush, Jalam, and Korah. These were the sons of Isu, who were born to him in Canaan. Isu took wives and sons and daughters and all the members of his household as well as his livestock and all his other animals and all the goods he had acquired in Canaan and moved to a land some distance from his brother Jacob. Their positions, their possessions were too great for them to remain together. The land where they were staying could not support them both because of their livestock. So Isu, once again, it puts in parentheses that is Edom, settled in the hill country of Seir, this is the account of Isu, the father of the Edomites in the hill country of Seir. These are the names of Isu's sons. Oh boy, I gotta go through this again. Eliphaz, son of Isu's wife's Ada, and Reuel, the son of Isu's wife's wife, base math. <laughs> it sounds like a man, this is the base math problem. Right. <laughs> the, son, it's the sons of Eliphaz, Taman, Omar, Zepho, Gatam, and Kenaz. Isu's son Eliphaz also had a concubine named Timnah, who bore him Amalek. These were the grandsons of Isu's wife Ada. Is that the Amalek that grew up to be the Amalek? Or am I thinking of something else? Uh, oh, you mean the king Amalek? I guess, yeah. I don't know. The sons of Reuel, Nahath, Zerah, Shema and Mizah. These were the grandsons of Isu's wife, Basemath. The sons of Isu's wife, Aholi Obama, daughter of Ana and granddaughter of Zibian, who she bore to Isu, Jeush, Jalam, and Korah. These were the chiefs among Isu's descendants, the sons of Eliphaz, the firstborn of Isu, Chief Taman, Omar, Zepho, Kenaz, Korah, Gatam, and Amalek. These were the chiefs descended from Eliphaz and Adam. They were grandsons of Ada, the sons of Isu's son Ruel, chiefs Nahath, Zerah, Shema, and Mizah. These were the chiefs descended from Ruel and Adam. They were the grandsons of Isu's wife, Basemath. <laughs> <laughs> the sons of Isu's wife, Holy Obama, chiefs Jush, Jalam, and Korah. These were the chiefs descended from Isu's wife, Holy Obama, daughter of Ana. These were the sons of Isu, and these were their chiefs. These were the sons of Ser, the Horite, who were living in the region. L Lotan, Shobal, Zibian, Ana, Dishan, Azir, and Dishan. <laughs> These sons of Ser and Edom were Horite chiefs. The sons of Lotan, Hori and Homam, Timnah was Lotan's sister. The sons of Shobal, Alvin, Simon and Theodore. Uh, <laughs> El, Elvin, Man, Manahath, Ibal, Shepho, 
and Onam, the sons of Zibion. Ahai, Ai, Ana, and Ana. This is Ana who discovered the hot springs in the desert while he was grazing the donkeys of his father Zibion. The children of Ana, Dishan, and Aholio Bama, daughter of Ana. <laughs> I keep thinking of Dijon Mustard every time I see that one name. The sons of Dijon Mustard, Hemdam, Eshban, Ithran, and Karan. The sons of Ezer, Bilhan, Zavan, and Akan. The sons of Dishan, Uz, and Aran. These were the Horite chiefs. Lotan, Shobal, Zibian, and Na, Dijon, Ezer and Dishan. These were the Horite chiefs according to their divisions in the land of Ser. These were the kings who reigned in Edom before any Israelite king re reigned. Bela, son of Beor, became king of Edom. His city was named Dinhabah. When Bela died, Jobab, son of Zerah from Bozrah, succeeded him as a king. When Jobab died, Husham from the land of the Temanites mm. succeeded him as king. When Hashan died, Hadad, son of Bidad, who defeated Midian in the country of Moab, succeeded him as the king. His city was named Eveth. When Hadad died, Samla from Masrakah succeeded him as king. When Samla died, Shal from Rehoboth on the river succeeded him as king. When Shal died, Balhanan, son of Akbor, succeeded him as king. When Balhanan, son of Akbor, died, Hadad succeeded him as king. His city was named Pal, and his wife's name was Mehetabel, daughter of Matred, the daughter of Me Zahab. These were the chief descendants from Isu by name, according to their clans and regions. Timnah, Elva, Jethath, Duke. Oleo, Holy Obama, Duke, Duke Holy Obama, uh, Elah, Pinan, Pino, Pino Grigio, I don't know, Kenaz, Taman, Miz, Mibzar, Magdil, and Iram. These were the chiefs of Edom, according to their settlements in the land they occupied. This was Isu, father of the Edomites. Whoa! Oh, woo, good job, Babster. Oh. Better than you. Better you than me. Oh. My, 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 do I have my ears have smoke coming out of them? <laughs> that felt like. We, if we could do editing, then we would do the woo woo. Jeez, that felt like an eight-hour day of like <laughs> intense labor. You know. Yeah, yeah, like that's like intense mental strain labor right there. But you know, somebody had to do it, and I think you're the man to step up for it. Mm -hmm. It would have taken us like thirty minutes if I tried to go through that. Oh yeah, and it would have been way worse. So, hey, you know, everybody's got their gifts. Yeah. So. I don't think slaughtering ancient people's names is a gift, but... Eh, you know what? <laughs> you you did like half slaughters. I would have been like 100% slaughter. So at least there's some of them that are like correct in that. So, hey, I've got, I've got 36 to read. Now, granted, they're not going to be quite as crazy as you, but still. So um, that I think is pretty self-explanatory of just going through Isu's history. That so just reminds me. That one's pretty good. So then we'll go on to 37. When I was in sixth grade, I remember on its particular spelling test. Yeah. The teacher had one of the words he had tried to, had to spell was Czechoslovakia. I was like, nobody can spell Czechoslovakia. I'm trying to get sixth graders to do it. That's and true. of course none of us got that, it right. Yeah. I don't. I don't even know how to do it now. So I'm saying no one can. Nobody. Ever. In the beginning, since the beginning of the time, no one. I right. don't even know. Like when they made up the name Czechoslovakia, I think they just made it up on the spot and put a bunch of letters together. Like whoever thought of that really wanted to. Confuse yeah. So anyway, people. that just made me think of that. That's hilarious. All right, I'm gonna do it. So chapter, chapter 37. Here we go. Back to Jacob, and Jacob, Jacob? dwelt. Yep. Yeah, remember we left. Ja Jacob is in. 
Oh. He left. Well, I just he was left like, Laban. No, 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 he did no, his wrestling. No, mine's he got Isu. the mine's got the headings. Oh, we're gonna go now it to says Joseph. Oh. Well, it says Joseph's dreams, but then the first word is Jacob. So I'm like, what? Uh. I love Joseph's story. Because you said Jacob, and I was like, it's supposed to be Joseph. It is. Yes. Well, we go back to Jacob, and then we oh. go into Joseph, and we get to see like what a pivotal person he plays, and in, in God's um, in God's plan and history and stuff. It's a really cool story. So. Without further ado, and Jacob dwelt in the land wherein his father was a stranger in the land of Canaan. These are the generations of Jacob. Okay. So Joseph being 17 years old was feeding the flock with his brethren. And the lad was with the sons of Bilhah and with the sons of Zilpah for um, sorry, Zilpah, his father's wives. And Joseph brought onto his father their evil report. <laughs> this is going to go good. <laughs> oh, he's a snitch. Well, I mean. He's a snitch. I guess if you're doing something evil, you probably want to know, maybe. We'll see. Let's see how the story evolves. <laughs> snitch. Now Israel loved Joseph more than all of his children. That always goes over well. Oh, yeah. <laughs> because he was the son of his old age. And he made him a coat of many colors. And when his brethren saw that their father loved him more than all of his brethren, they hated him. So this isn't going well. And could not speak peacefully unto him. And Joseph dreamed a dream. And he told it, and he told it his brethren, and they hated him yet the more. And he said unto them, Hear, I pray you, this dream which I have dreamed. For behold, we were binding sheaves in the field, and lo, my chef or my sheaf arose and also stood upright, and behold, your sheaves stood round about. And made obstinance to my sheaf. I have no idea what that is. What does yours say? For that was like seven. That one's a little. Um, it says sheaf too. That is a, a sheaf. I think is the uh, part of the. That's a particular part of the plant. Mm, oh, um, maybe corn. Is that corn? No, I might be. Sheaves of grain, no, actually, I think a sheaf is when uh, the, 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 maybe the stalks of the grain are tied together almost, and then a bundle, it's almost like a bundle, I, th I think, I think. Maybe that's what Something to that effect. Either way, I was just thinking, you know, he's talking shit, and he does end up ruling over them. But if I was one of them or all of them, I'd be like, dude, you better slow your roll, because well, if, if, we didn't, if we didn't sell you into slavery... Well, that's, you wouldn't become. You would have been. Don't tell a story, geez. Be quiet. You should have just left him in the bottom of the pit. Just be quiet. You can't say the story yet. You're giving too much away. So. Spoiler alert. Nope. We're gonna lock your lips okay. up. Lock them up. You don't know anything about the story. <laughs> Obviously. And he dreamed yet another dream. Oh wait, no. And his brethren and his brethren said to him, Shalt thou indeed reign over us, or shalt thou indeed have dominion over us? And they hated him yet the more for his dreams and for his words. And he dreamed yet another dream, and he told it to his brethren and said, Behold, I have dreamed a dream more. And behold, the sun and the moon and the eleven stars made obstinance to me. And he told it to his father and to his brethren. And his father rebuked him and said unto him, I love that word. <laughs> what is this dream that thou hast dreamed? Shall I and thy mother and thy brethren indeed come to bow down ourselves to thee to the earth? And his brethren envied him. But his father observed the saying. And his brethren went to feed their father's flock in Shechem. And Israel said unto Joseph, Do not thy brethren feed the flock in Shechem? Come, and I will send thee unto them. And he said to him, Here I am. And he said to him, Go, I pray thee, see whether it be well with thy brethren, 
and well with the flocks and bring me word again. So he sent him out of the vale of Hebron and he came to Shechem. And a certain man found him and behold, he was wandering in the field. And the man asked him saying, what seekest thou? And he said, I seek my brethren, tell me, I pray thee, where they feed their flocks. And the men said, they are departed hence. For I heard them say, let us go to Dothan. And Joseph went after his brethren and found them in Dothan. And when they saw him afar off, even before he came near unto them, they conspired against him to slay him. And they said one to another, Behold, this dreamer cometh. Come now, therefore, and let us slay him, and cast him into some pit, and we will say some evil beast hath devoured him. And we shall see what will become of his dreams. And Reuben heard it, and he delivered him out of their hands, and said, Well, let, let us not kill him. And Reuben said unto them, Shed no blood, but cast him in into this pit that is in the wilderness, and lay no hand upon him, that he might rid him out of their hands, to deliver him to his father again. And it came to pass, when Joseph was come unto his brethren, that they stripped Joseph out of his coat, his coat of many colors that was on him, and they took him and cast him into a pit. And the pit was empty. There was no water in it. And they sat down to eat bread. And they lifted up their eyes and looked. And behold, a company of Ishmaelites came from Gilead with their camels, bearing spicery and balm and merith, going to carry it down to Egypt. And Judah sent on to his brethren, what profit is it what profit is it if we slay our brother and conceal his blood come and let us sell to him the ishmaelites and let not our hand be upon him for he is our brother and our flesh how nice of them yes right i know right wait you lucky it's your lucky day we decided not to kill you today we're just gonna sell you in a slavery. yes and they were content so you know uh, why well, of course right i mean he, no bloodshed he's, he's not dead so it was a generous who decision. cares if he's sold into slavery and somebody else kills him or tortures him but you know, it's funny how you know he can pass that stuff sometimes <laughs> siblings oh siblings then they're passed by midianites uh, merch, merchantmen and they drew and lifted up joseph out of the pit and sold joseph to the ishmaelites for 20 pieces of silver and they brought joseph into egypt and and reuben returned onto the pit and behold joseph was not in the pit and he and he rent his clothes and he returned onto his brethren and said the child is not and i whither shall i go and they took Joseph's coat and killed a kid of the goats and dipped the coat in blood. So not only did they off Joseph to some random people, they they killed a random goat. Just and then they ruined a good garment. But they well, soaked blood in it. Yeah, they had soaked the blood. And I don't in. think they had. I don't think they had. Uh, which I'm call it back then to clean the blood out. So the thing was stained permanently. Yeah, probably was a lot Hydrogen of work. peroxide. Too. I mean, probably yeah. a lot of work to make something like that back then too. All sorts of sins going on here. But we don't do any sense, right? No. <laughs> um, let's see. And they sent the coat. And they sent the coat of many colors. And they brought it, it to their father and said, This have we found. Know now whether it be thy son's coat or no. And he knew it. And he said, It is my son's coat. An evil beast hath devoured him. Joseph is without doubt rent in pieces. And Jacob rent his clothes and put sackcloth upon his loins and mourned for his son many days. And all his sons and all his daughters rode up, rose up to comfort him. But he refused to be comforted. And he said, For I will go down into the grave unto my son mourning. 
Thus his father wept for him, and the Midianites sold him into Egypt onto Papipar, <laughs> an officer of Pharaoh's and captain of the guard. Dun, dun, dun. That's 37. So that is the start of Joseph's story. We're so not going to... You've got We your, can't go too far down the, the rabbit hole, but... You've got your average family drama. I mean, definitely. Murder, selling us into slavery. Jealousy or envy, yeah. whatever you want to call it. Uh, maybe a little bragging. Typical stuff. A little snitching, you know. Yeah, snitch. Oh, this chapters have got all the good stuff. Right. I mean, you don't need to have... You don't have to watch Days of Our Lives. You just watch... Just read this Days is, of the Bible and you'll get your fill. Right. Right. <laughs> yeah, we can always recap um, in the next video. So, holy moly, how long was it? Uh, one hour. No, oh, that's not terrible. Yes, so. this is it be... was a long video, but there was a lot of stuff in there. We just can break it up. The cat was yapping the whole time. It was like you know. Was... So this is the start of. Like a really pivotal, like a very pivotal story in the Bible. So next time we'll spend more time, I think. We can recap. Um, well, I know what happened. He was with all his litter of brothers and sister cats. And they shoved him into a snowbank, you know, to get rid of him. And okay. they lied to the kitty, the, the cat brothers, his cat to their father and said, Inky was torn to pieces by rabid dogs. When in reality, they shoved him out into a snowbank and left him for dead. Yes. Awesome. So, yep. Yeah, so we will end with that. And then next time we'll go over, thir like, 37 a little bit more and more on to this, like, story. and more on? Like, more of what it means and <laughs> applications and stuff like that. Excuse me. Ready? So, babes for babe, pray. Dear Lord, first and foremost, we'd like to thank you very much for my hair. Came out pretty good today. <laughs> it did. Kind of. No, we pray, uh, we'd like to thank you once again for this opportunity yeah. to spread your word. Uh, and once again, I simply cannot verbalize how grateful we are for everything that we have from the littlest thing that we absolutely take for granted all the time. I mean, even a, something as simple as a chair. I mean, you know, and I know it sounds dumb to some people but if you really think about it everything we have is uh, that most people have is the, the average person today lives better than a king of yesteryear and that's all thanks to you so we appreciate it very much and appreciate you allowing us to get your word out to our tens of viewers and we ask that you bless us and bless your our viewers and well your viewers <laughs> That's right. And uh, we want to give you all the glory you are due. Yes. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. I just want to thank you. I thank you, Lord. Did you stop it? I'm going to uh, Okay. I didn't know. I'm just making sure that we don't keep rolling, rolling, rolling. <laughs> <laughs>